the psychiatrist goes on maternity leave. Back in the day, I used to hang around the wards and hang around the programs and everything with a bunch of other patients. And this was a long, 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 long time ago, decades ago. You know, back in those days, these places used to be real cozy and posh. And some of them, many of them, were not even locked. And people used to spend long time and everything. And, well, we used to say, oh, no, what are we going to do when the doctor goes on vacation? Oh, no, what are we going to do when he retires? But, you know, we never really talked about what would happen if the doctor was a woman because there really weren't many woman psychiatrists. And uh, I did eventually relocate. I ended up at McLean Hospital, and all of a sudden there were a lot, a lot, a lot of women psychiatrists around, and many of them were young, in fact. And sure enough, I, I actually wanted a woman because well, that's, that I did, I did. I thought it would be new and different. Now my boyfriend said to me, Jules, a psychiatrist in a new, different, slick package is still a psychiatrist. He, he was so wise. We should have stayed with the original Lucy Van Pelt, because, folks, he was absolutely right. Anyway, I did, I did, I did, I did try out women psychiatrists. Uh, I, I, I was actually shuffled from one doctor to another doctor to another doctor. And someone said to me, Jules, Julie, you should, you know, have one that you, you stay with for a long time. And I ended up with Dr. Kimberly Pearson for 11 years after a while. She ended up, uh, she did have two babies, one, two. And I'll count them. And um, I also, uh, during that time, I, did, I had a therapist. I think I had the same therapist through both babies. And they, were, uh, they would talk to each other, and they would say, well, they, would, they assumed I would be terribly upset and have trouble coping with the maternity leave. Oh, my God. They, I guess they don't realize that I just wasn't that dependent on them. But um, they would they they prepare me and teach me all these coping methods and oh here are our phone numbers and here's a number emergency number and I was like oh yeah yeah but uh, by the time the second baby was happening I was at that point looking forward to the substitute doctor because actually <laughs> I wanted that second opinion I was very concerned because I was on a pill called good old Seroquel. And if any of you guys know me, you know what good old Seroquel did to me. I had already gained considerable weight by the time baby number two came around. I was anxious to get another opinion on Seroquel. I, I believe this was, I believe when baby number two came around, I was on 900 milligrams of the stuff. I never needed 900 milligrams of Seroquel, for Christ's sake. Jeez, talk about irresponsible drugging. Plus, I was on, like, two other antipsychotics I never needed either. So, on this 900 milligrams, uh, I think by the time baby number two was there, uh, my weight had doubled. I uh, literally doubled. Um, and, anyway... So uh, the, the therapist is preparing me for this maternity leave, telling me about coping skills and how I was gonna, she was like bracing herself for me falling apart and ending up in the hospital. And I was saying, hmm, I, I, probably, I, I should probably get in touch with this um, psychiatrist number two. I mean, so maybe she can like lower the dose at least. So anyway, meanwhile, uh, they finally told me her baby, her baby came early. I was like, oh, phew. But what happened, uh, the unexpected happened. No, I didn't fall apart and had huge major panic attack. No, that's not what happened. Uh, I woke up in the morning one day, found out I couldn't walk. I could not stand up anymore. I had gained so much weight. So, uh, 
Someone found a wheelchair for me, and there I was, sitting in a wheelchair. I couldn't even leave the house. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was like, uh-oh. What now? So, I, yeah, I was literally stuck in the house. And, um, uh, so, um, uh, with more circle weight gain, I was starting to bust out of the wheelchair. Does this sound like Winnie the Pooh to you? Remember when he went to into rabbit the rabbit hole and then he couldn't get out because he'd eaten so much honey? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, not, it's like, this is out of the twilight zone. So one by one, the, the, the arms of the wheelchair came off, like they busted off and the screws came off. So I was, I was like, I was looking around my apartment for a screwdriver, because I was going to screw, I was going to find these screws that had popped off, and I was going to put the screws, <laughs> put the screws back on the the arms, so the, screw the arms back on, so that it at least looked like the arms were still on, and look like I wasn't so big that I busted out of the wheelchair, so, you know, just patch it up, right, you know, when, when you start to get really big, you have to unbutton your pants, but you don't want to look that way, so you, like, put a shirt over, I know the tricks, I know, I know, I know, but anyway, yeah, I was doing that, too, and I would, like, buy bigger and bigger and bigger pants that make it not look that way, but anyway, uh, and I'd wear them unzipped, oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know how it is, I, I, I went through that, so, I went through hell with weight gain. And I couldn't walk, and I couldn't stand up, and I was like, what now? How long is this going to last? Is this my life from now on? Is this going to keep going? Am I going to be 700 pounds in, like, how long? And I'm, like, doing the math, and, yeah. What's, am I going to die? Am I going to not ever, am I going to be bedridden? How long is that going to take? Can I even do the math anymore? <laughs> Okay, so, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I even, I, like, I, I sent my, my therapist an article on a lady who was 700 pounds, she could get out of bed anymore. So, um, I, I, this is going to happen to me, I, I, I asked my therapist, this is going to happen to me. So, um, um, my, my, my therapist was trying to teach me techniques for accepting my body. <laughs> okay, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think something needs to change, but anyway, uh, so, um, three months passed, and I was still growing, <laughs> what, what, what is this, Jack and the Beanstalk, <laughs> yeah, um, and the, the, my psychiatrist's office let me know my psychiatrist had come back from her maternity leave, now, the office for her, like, the Wang 8 building had, there was construction at that office, so they had temporarily moved down the street and closer to uh, North Station. It was, like, usually it's Wang 8, way, way up there, because they hide the mental patients. They don't want people to see the mental patients. That's why I keep them way up there. Just like Mr. Rochester and Jane Eyre, remember that? He kept her in the attic. That's, that's why they keep the mental patients in the attic, because they hide us. They're ashamed of us. They don't want anybody seeing kooky people. Uh, ashamed. So, uh, you know, mental patients are, mental hospitals are on hills. That's why they hide us. So, um, that meanwhile, they tucked us away over down the street from the, um, the building. And so I had to take a cab. I, you wouldn't believe, like, the whole day was, like, over $100 cab ride to get there. And so I had to get to this appointment, all holy appointment with Dr. Pearson. Why didn't I fire her sooner? But anyway, so I'm getting there. Let's see. What do you say to a psychiatrist after maternity leave? Do you say, did everything come out all right? Or is that what you ask your gastroenterologist? Is it okay to ask your psychiatrist, what did you name your baby? Or is that a boundary violation? I finally decided it, it, it's okay to ask her the baby's name, but uh, maybe not. So I, I finally got there and I'm struggling to get up through. Have you ever tried to go through a revolving door in a walker? No, never mind. This walker was my junior walker from my uh, leg fracture days. So I 
was twice the size I should have been, so I didn't fit in my junior walker, mind you. It, that was embarrassing. So I'm trying to struggle to get into the revolving door. Yes, I fit into the revolving door. It's just that try to get through a revolving door in a walker. And I got up the elevator. Yes, I could do that, but okay, it was hard. It was hard. I couldn't stand up barely. But anyway, I got in there, hobble into that waiting room, sit down. Oh, and then I had to go sign papers. So I go up to the office, like there. They weren't asking for your ID, fingerprints, and criminal history yet, but um, th th those days were coming. And um, yeah, then I had to take these papers that I had signed back to my seat, but it was really hard. You tried doing that in the walker when you can't walk in the walker anyway. So I go back to the seat. And there she comes, stomping in. She's 20 minutes late, but she wants me to hurry immediately in 10 seconds back to her office. And she's already back there practically. But she, she expects me to be there like yesterday. So I get like two feet toward her office and all the papers go dumping on the floor. <laughs> but it, she looks at me, oh, you, you must have a diagnosis. You, you, you must be like, oh, she's like already got the diagnosis in her head for having my having dumped the papers. And she walks on. Okay, she's not going to help me with the papers, but she's like, hurry up, Julie. And get a bend over, get the papers, put them back in my hands, which you can't really hold the papers because i got two hands gripping that damn walker for dear life. And I hobble to the office, and she's like, come on, hurry up. But she turns to me and looks at me and says, Julie, I didn't know... You use a walker now. Every piece of me just stopped right there because that moment meant everything to me and told me just what was happening right then. That this was my life and this was going to be my life. If something didn't change, I used a walker now. I used a walker now. So, I hobbled in there. And finally, I took a good look at Dr. Pearson. Had she just been on maternity leave? Wait a minute, she just had a baby, didn't she? And I looked up at her again. Shining happy face. Now, she didn't look like she just had a baby, did she? But she did. She had just had a baby because she was pregnant last time I saw her. You kind of can't fake pregnancy. So she did just have a baby. Okay. But what had she done since she had the baby? Well, how many hours had she been working out at the gym um, that's where my Medicaid and Medicare money had been going to. Um, like, okay. Now this office, all those, like, shrink offices there, I, I remember them being really chilly, especially this one over by North Station. It was like a real temporary office. They weren't there long. It was super chilly. I, you'd have to, I had to wear... I, from what I remember, uh, you know, not just my fleece jacket, but I had to put like, a vest over it. In, at any weight, I had to put all these, like, jackets on, because it was chilly there. Now, she was wearing her usual sleeveless top, mini skirt, and you saw all the musculature, including, you know, everything that showed me she worked out at every single machine at the gym, all the, 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 the chest machines, the ab machines, the thigh machines, the push-ups, the pull-ups, every the barbells. Oh my God, how many hours had she spent? How can you do that after you have a, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the, uh, those clothes, you have to wear that. And I weigh what? What did she ask me about? My symptoms. 
do I need any refills? Do I have any <laughs> side effects? Finally, I asked her the question, what her, she had named her baby, and she told me rather dismissively, very quickly, what she had named her baby, and I, I, I do remember to this day what she named her baby. <laughs> she said it so fast, and then she changed the subject. Like, it didn't matter that I knew, because I'm not really a person. I was a cog in a wheel who owned my body, because then I knew. And from that day on, and really, it had been happening all along. Things, you know, in, when I asked that question, when I got dismissed like that, every day when you see these things happening, it's that drop of enlightenment. You get enlightenment, because let me tell you something, personal is political. We can change things. Every change you make in your personal life impacts the whole. Take back your body and every tiny piece of your body that you take back, you say, no, I am not, I own my body. You do not own my body. The institution does not own my body. I am not a thing. I make my own decisions. I know what's best for me. The state does not. I, no one can predict an outcome for me. No one is that powerful. No one knows better than I do what my capabilities are and what my needs are than I do. No one knows what's for my own good better than I do. That drop of enlightenment. When you say no, when you take back your body, in however small a way. It's a step toward enlightenment. It's a step toward changing the world for all of us. So I walked out of the office that day. And, you know, I wasn't free of psychiatry. And I wasn't, you know, I hadn't lost any weight. And I hadn't. I wasn't, you know, off Syroquel from what I recall, but it was one thing that I learned that I, as you can tell, I, I remembered forever. I remember that day forever, and here I am, you know, some 10 or 11 days, years later, talking about it and laughing over it and saying to myself, you know, that was quite something, and the doctor went on maternity leave and to the end, you know, wasn't much longer after that 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 I I, I, I I was able to free myself and I would wish that for anybody. I would wish that for anybody. Did everything come out all right, doctor? Yes, everything came out all right. Have a nice day, everybody. Till next time. This is Julie Green. Bye bye.